Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the Threshold PEP. The Threshold PEP is a dual device. It can uh, be used for hyperinflation therapy and also for mucus clearance therapy. And the techniques are going to be a little bit different. Now what you're going to start off by doing is uh, it comes with a mouthpiece and nose clips, but you can also attach it to a mask. This is the OptiChamber Advantage mask. And you can also uh, use Cardinal's adapter, part number 5923-504. And this fits on the end, and now you can attach it to a trach or an ET tube. Or uh, if you're going to do T-piece trials, uh, you can also use it for that so the patient's lungs don't collapse while they're, while they're on a T-piece. When you're doing your hyperinflation therapy, what you're going to want to do is start off by setting, dialing down the amount of resistance. And this device goes from 5 centimeters all the way down to 20 centimeters. So typically you're going to want to start off at the easier, easier end, maybe the 5 centimeters, and work your way down, depending on how well the patient tolerates the therapy. Now this can be achieved simply by using your nose clips and the mouthpiece. The mask that I talked about, using it on the ET tube um, or a trach. But also, you can attach it to... the wide bore tubing on an aerosol nib. I, I've just put it here on this six inch wide bore corrugated tubing. But there's also another option. If you want to place it on with a 22 millimeter adapter, you can do that as well. So this has added benefits. It is for hyperinflation therapy, but if you think about most COPDers, when they take their NEB treatment, they, they treat it like a cigarette. They puff in, and then they hold it away. And they take a, a breath in, and then they hold it away. And they're doing that basically so they can purse lip breathe to exhale. Well, with the threshold PEP, it makes a more comfortable treatment for them. It gives them the back pressure that they want to breathe comfortably and so that their lungs don't collapse. Well, what this does, it also distends their airways open during their treatment, allowing medication to get deeper into their lungs, actually to their receptor sites where it can do some, some good. It holds their airways open so that secretions can actually have a path to, uh, to move up, to escalate. And then um, following that treatment, what you're going to do is a forced expiratory maneuver. So for, for your hyperinflation part, you're, you're dialing in, just to recap, you're dialing in the amount of pressure that you want, and then you're going to breathe through the device the same kind of a breath as you would do through a NEB treatment. Slow deep in, slow deep out. And what that's going to do is, is give added pressure to areas of your, of your chest where you may not feel that with an IS treatment or other hyperinflation therapy tr treatments. Uh, this is going to give back pressure to every area inside your, your lungs, so you will recruit. It's just like turning up the peep on a, on a ventilator. Uh, it, it helps disperse that pressure everywhere. Comparing it to like an IS treatment, with, with IS, it's a negative inspiratory pressure. So um, it, it can be painful for the patients. So sometimes they, they take a pillow and they'll pillow splint, um, which really works against you. Um, yes, you want them comfortably, comfortable, but when they pillow splint, they, they hold their, their abdomen in and it's harder for them to create a negative pressure within their chest at that point, so therefore they're less effective in, in recruiting lung volume. With this, it's like internally splinting themselves because it's a positive pressure in their chest, so the pressure is felt throughout their whole lung, and you can recruit additional lung volumes that way. When you do your forced maneuver, your FET technique, your forced expiratory technique, Basically what you're going to do, you're going to follow that after you do your hyperinflation therapy. So for your force technique, what you should do is dial this pressure down all the way to the bottom, which is 20 centimeters of pressure. You're going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in, pause, and then blast it out, just like you do when you cough. You take a deep breath in, you close your glottis, you build up pressure, and you blast it out you're going to do the same thing with this. If they don't understand that technique, um, it's similar to a peak flow. Use the air dart gun analogy. Um, spit wads. If they're, if they're young children, they like, they like that. Tell them you're going to hide at the end of their bed and they need to shoot you with a spit wad. 
and they'll blast and blast and blast on this. And what it does, it just builds up a lot of pressure at the base of your lungs, it gets behind the secretions, and it can come out in one, one big shot. So it doesn't need to flutter or oscillate to, to get those secretions out. That's not how we normally cough. We, we take a big breath in and we blast it out, and, and it's very effective, and that way we don't tire out as well. Uh, it, comparing this to the acapella, it's, it's got some different advantages. This device, when you um, set it, you can actually dial in the amount of resistance that you want. With the acapella, there's a plus and a minus, and you don't know exactly where you're going to be at. So with this, from one shift to the next, you can actually tell whether the patient's, they've got a baseline, you can tell whether or not they're getting better or worse. If the patient requires supplemental oxygen, you can always use this adapter. It's HS730A-001, and this would go in between the, the mouthpiece and the threshold pad. You can supply additional uh, oxygen through there or just a, a gas source. But one of the main advantages of using the threshold PEP over other PEP devices is there is no need for additional gas source. So um, unless they need high amounts of oxygen, most of the time if they're just left on their cannula and take this therapy, uh, their SATs are good because you're adding PEP. Uh, the other advantage of using this without supplemental oxygen is the patient can use this on their own. They can go home with it. If they have residual atelectasis, they can be discharged from the hospital. Um, you can go in in the hospital and check them, Q4, QID, um, make sure that they're doing it correctly and giving a good effort, but you can leave this at the bedside and they can supplement those treatments um, when they're watching TV and a commercial comes on. Similar to an IS, just pick it up and blow into it. So to recap, the PEP therapy, it's the lower pressures um, from five centimeters on up, deep breaths in, slow deep breaths out, Crank it up all the way for the, the PEP, the FET technique. You're going to take a deep breath in and blast it out. And that will produce a cough. If you have secretions, it, it will make you cough. That's it. Thank you.